Good afternoon, everyone. This is the doctor. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Tales of Crystoria. It did just recently come out and I played probably about four or five hours. And I want to just give my general impressions, what I think about the game and kind of where I think it's going to go in the future, because I know there's a lot of people who care about this type of stuff. And if you're like me, the Tales franchise is one of those franchises who seems to be really hit or miss, particularly with franchises and particularly with games. I played pretty much almost every Tales game that's come out. I'm not sure I've beaten them though, because sometimes they lose me halfway through. So of course they are beautiful and this game is no exception though. You can see the art, absolutely fantastic. They've got an animated intro. And believe it or not, in actually the main story, they have a lot of animated scenes as well, which actually surprised me. I was expecting sort of a generic, uh, sort of mobile game story when I started this. I It's not a game that I've been following since the beginning, but I was actually surprisingly impressed with the quality of the story. So let's hop in here. The protagonist is definitely a little bit of an issue. He doesn't engage me too much. Of course, I'm not too far in. You can see here there's also login rewards which are awesome pretty standard for your gotcha game this is the main protagonist here <laughs> look at that we're just just showing you guys everything here so hopping in here most of the standard gotcha stuff so let's just talk about some of this right now so we're gonna finish talking about the story though since that's where i started the story is really good actually the main protagonist is a little bit boring but I actually feel like the story is engaging enough compared to other gotcha games that it's pretty good. And then that little bit of animated story that does happen to pop in every now and then is really engaging. I don't want to show you guys any of the story because I wouldn't want to spoil it for you. But I would say I finished the sort of first primary section of the game that's been released so far. And, you know, it actually makes me want to play it more. If I weren't engaged in so many different gacha games, I would probably be doing this one just a little bit harder than I currently am. Now, of course, you do have an arena feature. You have your summons, you have your characters. And I think one of the cool things about this game is just the depth of the characters. And it's not so much that you have all of these different characters and they actually look really cool. I think this is like one of the coolest in terms of they actually use the character's art to represent the characters. I think that's way better than something like War of the Visions that has like 3D models or little tiny pictures. Like I think this really engages and captures you. And one of the things you can do with your characters that I think is so cool, like I would love this, is you can actually customize them. And there's so many different options for customization, it's kind of hilarious. You can see here, you can swap between also a 2D and a 3D image of the character. And you can do this for every single character. It's super awesome. You can see here, you can also select the different art styles that you want. You can select, you know, maybe you want their stones. Maybe you want just their general status like that. It's super cool. And this affects the background in the game as well. I think like in terms of playing a gacha game, this is one of the best features in a gacha game I've seen in forever. And <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but the cosmetics you don't have to pay for. You actually do get different outfits for your character. I don't have any one for this character though. You have different attachments that you can attach. And let me just show you the attachment system here. You have different pieces of the body. So if I wanted a hat, and this is just me playing a little bit. I can give him a wizard's hat. I can give him a top hat. I have different styles of glasses if I wanted to give him shades. I gave him a mustache, but I can also give him a band-aid. And then you can save this. And what actually happens here, if I pop out, and keep in mind you can do this on any character. If I actually pop out here to the front page, and if I go to... Oh, where is it? Home settings? I believe that's it. All right, here we go. So let's do 3D display and we're gonna, we're gonna remove these characters. So basically you can choose all the different characters that you want. Um, 
this gonna work? There we go. I'm gonna, here we go, remove all. <laughs> you can choose the characters that you want, and then you can select a background as well. And so we're gonna go ahead and choose the church here. Then we're gonna save this, and then we're gonna hop out, and you can actually see it changes the background of your home screen, not only to the character that's been customized, but also to the church in the background. And I just think this is one of the coolest features I've ever seen in a gacha game. And I know a lot of you guys probably care about the gameplay, you probably care about the arena, the rewards. I mean, honestly, if you're playing this game, you're gonna, like, the things that you're gonna love the most is probably gonna be the customization system. You do have access to missions, pretty standard. You have access to gifts. We can check out the shop as well, but you're never gonna get past this customization. I don't think you're gonna find a gacha game that lets you customize characters as much as Tales of Crestoria does. Let's go ahead and hop into the arena and I'll show you guys just how combat and the arena system works. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pop in here and engage. And this is very similar to the War of the Visions arena in that you can set up a team, a sub team, and then you can go against other players. So we're gonna hop here. I'm just gonna go ahead and have it auto it. And this is kind of what it looks like, is you have a sort of a battle system with four characters. And then I also have sub characters in case any of my characters die. And a lot of the combat in this game is about ramping up your hit score so that you get that damage modifier. So you can see there in the upper right hand corner, you can see that you get a damage modifier for the quantity of hits that you do on a character. And that's gonna be what maximizes your damage and is sort of the best way to do it. Some other things you don't see here that are going on is that you see that all of my characters have different types of equipment. Every single character has an element as well as a weapon class. So depending on what units you use, they can get certain bonuses from each other as well. Every character also has one of those really cool animated attacks that my Leon just used. Overall, I would say it's pretty awesome in terms of combat. It's not the most uh, free form though. So I'll go ahead and I'll do another battle not on auto and I'll just show you guys what I mean by that. So let's go do another battle just to get just to get this in here. This is these are actually against other players right now. And you can see it actually shows my Leon here in the background. And I bet you, I bet you, you can change that background. So if you see these little buffs, everyone gets a buff at the start of battle. And so I'm going to go ahead and you see, I only have three attacks for each character. And that's kind of one of the big drawbacks of this game is that there's only three attacks for every character. So there's not much quote unquote versatility in terms of character attacks, I feel like. Um, in terms of like, other things like gear, there is no equipment that you equip to your characters. There is shards though. So the system for gearing your characters and making them stronger and the combat system itself is not so much based off the attacks that the characters have, well that's a big part. A lot of their stats come from kind of what, what shards you have set and then what your quote unquote support equipment is. And we'll jump into our support equipment after this and we'll talk just a little bit about that because it's very complex and deep, but the game itself is also very simple as well. All right, let's get through this. Nice, we ranked up. All right, let's go back to the quote unquote to the top. <laughs> All right, let's go to our allies. Let's go to our party lineup and I'll show you guys what I mean here. So what you can see here is that we have main members, sub members and sub stones. So you have the character's base stats here, right? And then you see down here, I can actually select uh, what's called Memoria stones, which each have their own ability. So for example, Jade's ability is uh, Tech 4 Spear, plus 8% crit rate up to spear type allies on your composition. So this is where you can start to see that having units who are the same weapon type could potentially be beneficial or who are the same magic type. Of course, this isn't something we want to equip on this character because you can see in the upper left hand corner there, he is a dark element dual sword user. So that is not something we would want to do. Uh, minus 25% damage from burn to arts type allies. Not really that good. 
plus 30% art seal resist, crit damage plus 35, that's a single unit buff. So a lot of these are just kind of lackluster, plus 12% defense when battle starts, plus 12% attack when battle starts, and then you get up to the more complex ones, plus 10% crit rate to dual blade type allies. So you can see I already have that one set on Leon, because of course I have multiple dual blade type units in my party, and so of course that's gonna do better. You can also see that the Memoria Stones also enhance my character's stats. And you can see that depending on the stone that I equip, they're gonna get different stats on the character. So it's it gets a little bit complicated, but keep in mind, there's no equipment other than this. So you're not worried about getting sword equipment. You're not worried about getting shield equipment. It's all about collecting the Memoria Stones, leveling up the Memoria Stones, leveling up your characters and awakening your character arts. You do get sub members as well. So sub members will actually jump into the fight after one of your main characters has died. I actually think that's a really cool system and I kind of like that it gives you sort of that standard four man comp, but then you have backup if you need it. You also have sub stones here. Now what sub stones do is they basically give stats to the entire party and I believe it's at 10%. You can see here down below that it's showing you the total HP 539, attack 64, and defense 53 that's gonna be given to each character. So I could go ahead and just auto select it and let's see what it says. Let's just see what it gives me. And it actually changed up my par party comp just a little bit here. And the thing with substones too, is that different elements and different weapon types in the sub slot category will effect and buff other units of the weapon type and element type. So I know you guys are probably like, holy shit, that's a lot of information. And you're absolutely right. I haven't even figured it out yet myself, but I do think it's a really interesting system. And it's a system that's really kept me sort of engaged in the game while I'm playing because I'm experimenting with different ways to do it. One of the other things you can do here, and let's go ahead and show you the character leveling up screen. We'll go to characters and let's go to Leon because I like Leon the most. So you basically have multiple different ways to do this. And so Ascension is of course gonna raise your level cap. Awaken is gonna, I believe, um, raise your master skill. So that's gonna be um, plus 10% attack to all allies, plus 13% attack to dual type allies. And it's gonna level your mystic arts, which is that sort of animated scene that you saw earlier. And then Ascend is gonna level that level cap. And then you can see here, you can raise his max level just like this. And this is how you primarily get EXP other than uh, just farming missions. And you can see level them up. There's only three stats, HP, attack, and defense. And then there's also, if we can get out of this, there's also arts down here. So you can see I got his three different arts and I can actually level it. And you can see here it says, oh, you don't have the required items to level it. You don't have the required items to level it. I'm like, okay. Um, but I do have maybe like, let's try this character here. Oh man. Interesting. Cause they let me, they let me awaken her arts right here. You can see it's level two out of six here. So I guess it might depend on where you're at in the story in terms of what place you can awaken and what levels you can awaken. So lots of stuff to think about here. Really fun. I would say the depth of the game is here. It has potential. Memoria stones just add another complexity layer on top of it. You can see here, you can actually level your Memoria stones. You can level the Memoria skill as well. You can level the level to get better stats. It's just so, uh, like it's so much focused around the characters rather than on like equipment. Of course, you can set your uh, character teams for your friends. Uh, let's talk about uh, guild battle though and talk about the guilds. Uh, the guild screen is actually a little buggy for me. You can see how stuttery it is when I transition here. I don't know if this is just an optimization thing from the game being released early, but it's not something that's really been super engaging for me. You of course see Bob Thy Dead here, one of my good friends. Uh, from the Dr. Diggs channel. We've been experimenting with the guild and kind of checking it out. You do get access to raid later on, which is sort of like a guild team battle. It takes a lot to invest in the guild, so really make sure you know what you're doing when you get in there. One of the other things I noticed about this game too is that the summon system 
is a little wonky. You do get your free daily uh, friend point summons, so let's go ahead and do this. And you actually get things like food, which is another cool feature because you can get, you can actually eat food before every mission and it'll actually give you a status buff. So that's another super cool feature. You have arena summon and then the primary summon system takes the 2,500 of the gems up here and it's kind of hard to get the gems. I've only actually earned one free uh, 2,500 gem summon. So I've only summoned twice. And I think I got a little bit lucky on my account, but you're not gonna be summoning a boatload. Um, in terms of like making that easier on you though, they do offer a couple cheap options in regards to like reward passes. So you can buy a monthly, uh, reward pass and you can buy a login bonus basically for gleam stones so it's they make it kind of affordable kind of viable so if you're looking to dolphin on the game you can definitely get in there and do that just a little bit what else do we want to talk about in this game overall opinion i would say my overall opinion is it's actually a fun game i enjoyed this more than Sino alice i feel like it's easier to get into than most gotcha games if i had any concerns it would be that you're probably gonna be hitting the skill cap of this game pretty quickly when you're maxed out on your characters. I think there's definitely gonna be a quote unquote meta with it. And I think you're probably not gonna be able to deviate from the meta too much. It would be hard to say. I am not on that level of play, but from looking at it, it seems like it would be very easy and very viable just to go with like a set comp or like set abilities, right? Like, well, maybe there's only like five memoria stones that actually have good abilities so i could see that being a problem in the future other than that though i would say give this game a shot i enjoyed playing it where i'm at it's definitely staying installed on my phone i don't know if i'm gonna pursue it anymore but definitely check it out it's definitely worth it thank you so much for watching guys hit that subscribe button and have a great rest of your day